to your neighbor, so don't look down on yourself. You are the one that God wants to use. Hallelujah. Take your seat, please. It's such a joy to be in this convention, and I want to welcome you all once again uh, for I mean, need to have its fire 2023. Praise God. Can we celebrate Apostle Moses Mukisa and his lovely wife, Pastor Sarah Mukisa? Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming once again this morning. He'll be ministering in the evening, but he says, I don't want to miss any session. Praise God. We wanted him to get extra rest, but apostles are very strong and energetic people. Paul said, I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but Christ. Hallelujah. Who is strengthening me. He said, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. And I like the way he put it because in the expression in the original Greek rendition of it, he was speaking about grace as if grace was a person. The grace of God that was with me. Usually that expression is used for people when a person is with you. And several in the New Testament you will see Paul ending his letters with the grace of God be with your spirit or the Lord be with your spirit. The Lord Jesus is grace personified. Glory to God. Are we not grateful for the energizing of the grace of God? Every anointed man knows that uh, I have help from heaven. There are times when uh, you are doing things and you just know <laughs> that is not me. After service, you are like, Lord, that was not me. <laughs> you just go on your knees and, uh, and give the glory to the one to whom all the glory belongs. Because you know that couldn't have been you. There are times when grace even pushes you into things you will not dare naturally. Remember January 15, 1995. All I saw in my spirit was an image of somebody with a stiff elbow. So I gave a word of knowledge that somebody has a stiff elbow here. Come out uh, for healing. Oh, a lady who you know, walks out you know, in Rima Chapel that day with tears in her eyes. She said, look, this, is this elbow, it is stiff. It is not only stiff, it even makes the hand short. And she reached out her hand in front of the old audience like this. And one hand was that shorter than the other. And she was crying like, and, and I had given the word of knowledge. You have to do something about the hand. I was like, what kind of word of knowledge is this one now? That is putting me into trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then immediately in a flash, I remembered seeing a video of Charles and Francis Hunter where they were growing out arms and legs. And I just did what they did and said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, elbow right now, be healed. Let every muscle, tendon, and nerve begin to relax right now. And I command your hand to begin to grow out. And the hand began to grow. The, the, as it was coming out, I felt like jumping out of my own skin. I was, I was petrified by the miracle. The miracle even shook me. I was not like, oh dear, wow. Uh, I was certainly beside myself. That was not me. Victor does not have the audacity to do that one. And I know it very, very well. That was just God. Glory be to God. <laughs> I remember another opportunity, another situation like that. This time around, it was my own sister-in-law, my, my wife's older sister. She had had this experience in the north when suddenly one day, there was this medical condition, and she's a nurse. The, there was no communication between her brain, her nervous system, and her body from waist down. I mean, without any warning, she just suddenly collapsed on the floor, wham, like that. You know, and the legs, she couldn't stand on her legs. And it was a nervous condition, you know. My wife being very concerned, asked, and then knowing fully well that we have a, you know, a advanced hospital here in Ibadan, UCH, asked that she should please be brought down to Ibadan, you know. So 
They brought her down to Ibadan. She started taking some physiotherapy lessons, trying to learn how to walk again. And uh, I was just under the anointing in the old smaller building here. And I said, I see a, I see a lady. You have problems walking. <laughs> if I need to my sister, maybe I would not give that word of knowledge. <laughs> I said, and I, and I just see the power of God coming upon you right now, and I see you walking. And a few seconds later, I just saw my sister-in-law claim that word. She was sitting on this flank of the auditorium. We used to call it, uh, there was eagle's wing, overcomer's wing. It was an L-shaped smaller auditorium we had here before. The one was eagle's wing, overcomer's. So she was in overcomer's. Because the ground is flat, so it was easier for her to sit on that side. And I just suddenly saw her by faith, taking that word and beginning to take steps beginning to take steps, beginning to take steps. And before long, she was walking, better walking well, walking well to the glory of God. I was like, thank you, Father, for doing the miracle. That was certainly not me. You know, it's usually easier for us to believe for more distant people than our own. Praise God. Because she, we left the same house that morning. So if I was the miracle worker, I would have walked it before we left the house. <laughs> I would have walked it before we left the house. But I was not under the anointing at home. And I did not have the boldness. Hallelujah. But the glory of God came. I got word of knowledge. And at the times the word of knowledge might not be as detailed enough for you to know who. Or to know all the details of the condition. But uh, let's just make ourselves available for God to use us. He will do things that will make us amazed ourselves amazed ourselves. <laughs> I remember I was, there was this lady in, in Atlanta years ago. Yeah, I remember. By the way, that was a wonderful word that God brought through Pastor Okwekolawale, wasn't it? When I arrived and that message was good, I said, yes, that's my daughter preaching powerfully. Glory to God. That was a good word. Amen. Truly anointed. And I'm excited. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But that one pastor that is very soon will introduce you as the husband of Pastor Kwekola Wale. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he has no problems with it. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, we can just find ourselves just being used by God for things that are beyond us, just to make ourselves available. Help me tap your neighbor, make yourself available to be used by God. He will take you places beyond your wildest imagination. All right, I better get into the word of God today so that uh, I don't use all the time to, you know, when you don't have something to say at times, you just be greeting and greeting. I'll be looking at the time when it is 10 minutes that is left. There was a man of God that used to do that. He will play and joke with all the time. When it is now 10 minutes to the end of the sermon, he will just, hmm. some of you are looking around and you are wondering what am I saying? You didn't see Jesus just show up in this service right now. You don't know Jesus. Do you know Jesus? In Genesis, he is the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our high priest. In Numbers, he is our, our the pillar of cloud by the other pillar of fire by night. And we go on and on to the 66 books of the Bible. Everybody will be shouting. Yeah! Then he will start from John chapter 1 all the way to chapter 21. Everybody will be swinging the chandeliers. And he will put down the microphone. <laughs> Very interesting preacher. <laughs> but by the end of the 10 minutes, everybody will be shouting and clapping. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, I want to really thank you for coming to this meeting. Some men of God have just joined us this morning. And I want to really thank God for them. All the way from Lagos, I can see my beloved son in the gospel, senior pastor of the Evidence Church in Boshe and Lekki. Let's welcome Pastor Paul Adeniye. I celebrate and appreciate you. God is using him tremendously. Glory to God. Even though I have ought against you, praise God. Yes, we were in the U.S. together recently. He didn't come to say hello to me. Yes, he was so busy serving the Lord everywhere that uh, he did not have time for me. It's only Nigeria that is greeting me. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. We will know where they change it. Yes, I will still collect my dollars from him. <laughs> you know? they, they change it to Sabu. <laughs> the 
Rangers, you say, I will not let anybody cheat me. <laughs> we know where the change is. He said, the spiritual son of his went abroad, came back, and, you know, went on an official trip, and they gave him a star code. He came back and came and gave him a check of uh, uh, 100,000, and I said, ah, me. He said, was that what they gave you when you went there? He said, we too, we know where they change it. Go and bring the original one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us know Pastor of Hosanna Praise Christian Center, a great friend of this ministry. Uh, let's welcome Pastor Sammy Guiaye to, to the convention. God bless you, man of God. I said, my Pastor Sam go ways back. When I was a student of Kwara State Polytechnic, we were living in the same village. I hope you still remember the name of that village. That village was called Lajolo. <laughs> Outside the campus. We lived there together. Praise God. Very interesting village. We fetched water from the well. Mm. Those were days of great beginnings. Great beginnings. I lived in an accommodation where when you wake up in the morning, smoke will have filled everywhere. You will just discover that when you are bathing, black color is coming. <laughs> yes, it is, it is, it is, uh, a lot of cooking has taken place and a whole lot of stuff has settled on your body and on your bed. Smoke, yes, they've settled, yes. So, you would be darker every morning than you were the previous night. Yes. Wonderful accommodation, praise God. <laughs> All right, I celebrate every other man of God that I might not have noticed who has just joined us this morning. Well, let's go back to our text where we started from yesterday night, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. And we are reading from the 13th verse. Matthew's Gospel 16. And we are reading from verse 13. Glory be to God. Mm. Dr. K is still on his way. I hope you are interested in that prosperity anointing. Mm. I can't hear yes. But the people are very spiritual. They don't like money. Is that not so? Because anytime, just like Dr. K was asking yesterday, the yes was not flowing. And uh, I noticed this morning too that the yes is not flowing very well. Hallelujah. Are you expecting the prosperity anointing this morning? Those are the Lagosians, I'm sure. <laughs> the Lagosians, that was why they went to that city in the first instance. They went there to look for their money. <laughs> God, but, the, but that's why the Christianity in Nevada is, uh, is stronger, more, gen, more genuine than the, the one in Lagos. Yes, but the people will serve the Lord, money or no money. The Lagos won. If they are not prospering financially, they will leave your church. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. I hope I didn't come with a joking anointing to this convention. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, say, relax. Yeah, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Enjoy yourself. Life is not that hard. Yeah, when you have a joyless atmosphere around you, it repels the anointing. Mm, it repels the anointing. Yeah. When the anointing was on Aaron and his sons, and the sons of Aaron who offered strange fire before God died, Moses had to tell Aaron and the other sons, they must not mourn. They must not grieve. Why? Because of the holy anointing that was upon them. They must not. In other words, anointing and mourning, grieving, depression, sadness, they don't go hand in hand. Praise God. There is nothing spiritual about being joyless and about being sad. In fact, when you are sad and joyless, you are very carnal. And I'm saying it on the strength of the word of God. Do you know spiritual does not mean speaking in tongues and pacing back and forth. That is not spiritual, that's religion. Spirituality is the spirit being in domination over the flesh. When you are spirit controlled, you are spiritual. That's the 
literal meaning in the Bible. Spirit controlled. And what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love is the first word in Galatians 5.22. What is the next word? Joy. Joy is the next. The fruit that tells us you are a Christian, that tells us you are a child of God. The first thing that tells us you are a believer is love, the God kind of love, and the very next one is joy. Glory to God. So all this, mm, this frowning face all over the place, it, it is not spirituality, it is what? Carnality. So let me look at your neighbor just to check if he's spiritual or carnal. The expression on their face will show it. Can they smile? Are they smiling or laughing? <laughs> Praise God. Come on, let's welcome a dear friend of this ministry, Reverend Benga Kotila. Such a joy to see you. Powerful apostle of God. Sure love and celebrate you. Thank you so much for coming this morning. And I just noticed that my son, one of our, it was one of our staff in Lagos before, and now pastoring New Creation Church in Badagri, Lagos. Pastor Mike. Sorry? Oh, Love Creation Christian Center. Praise God. I, I didn't call your son name. Pastor Mike Ojuri. I usually add success to it. Ojuri success. <laughs> Ojuri prosperity. Ojuri means the eye a sin. Amen. God bless you, son. Thank you so much for coming. Pastor Yinkadeleke, we celebrate you a very great deal. Thank God for your life. We appreciate you for what God is using you for. The, the man who got to your right, I'm so sorry, sir. Your name is, I've been trying to, to pull it out of my file. I couldn't. Praise God. You came with uh, Pastor Paul? Oh, I see. Praise God. No wonder you look like an apostle. You're a son of the apostle. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming. Are we in Matthew 16? All right, from verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjuna, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Father, I anoint the teaching of your word this morning. Let it come with clarity and understanding. We ask for divine illumination and the impartation of faith as a result. In Jesus' name, and someone says amen. amen. Now, yesterday I laid the foundation that... The revelation of Jesus Christ leads to transformation. Jesus was so concerned about how his own disciples perceived him. Of course, he started the discourse by asking them what other people were saying about himself. And they ran their mouths very speedily about what other people were saying about him. And then he asked them, well, you, 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 what do you have to say about me? Because you see, uh, like they say in, 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 in earthly parlance, Perception is everything. Perception is everything. Uh, the intrinsic value of a product is not necessarily its market worth. It is always the perceived value. And that's why Coca-Cola may be 99% sugar water. But it sells faster than fresh orange juice packaged by your neighbor. The fresh orange juice packaged by your neighbor is full of vitamin C that is beneficial as an antioxidant to your body and helps your body to fight disease but you would rather drink the Coca-Cola than the orange juice of your neighbor. Why? Perception. Advertisements have persuaded us that Coca-Cola is very good for us and it is 99% sugar water. There is how many cubes of sugar inside a bottle of water, mama? A bottle of, a bottle of Coke, sorry. 15 cubes of sugar. Is that one bottle of Coke? Because mama did IT in uh, Coca-Cola there in the battle before. You know, so, so many cubes of sugar. Uh, inside, inside a bottle of Coke and 
You take it and go, 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 go like that and it's slid into your body. And it's depositing fat in all the places where you can see extensions, protrusions, and uh, hallelujah. And you think it is breakthrough. <laughs> but perception, somebody say perception. Jesus went to Nazareth, his own hometown, in Mark chapter 6 and in verse 3, the Bible says, and he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. He could there do no mighty works. Why? Perception. The Bible says, and they were offended at him, and they began to say, is not this the carpenter? In, uh, you, you know, and is this, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Is this not our neighbor? How come he is claiming he is the desire? They perceived him as a neighbor. They perceived him as an ordinary man. They perceived him as a carpenter. They perceived him as the son of Mary. They perceived him as the son of Joseph. They perceived him as the brother of Joseph and Judah and, 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 and James they, and Simon. They perceived him as the older brother of their friend. The ladies perceived him as the older brother of their friend. They, and all those perceptions could not let them receive from him. But the same Jesus is perceived here by Simon Peter as the Christ, the anointed ruler, the Messiah, the son of the living God, meaning he is God. And that perception, which was a result of revelation, you know, transformed Peter's life. Because like Dr. Maurice Arillo used to say, the, the measure of value determines the flow of virtue. I say that again. The measure of value determines what? The flow of virtue. When you value a gift very highly, and that's where it is so important that in every ministry there is a culture of honor. No matter how familiar you are with the man of God, no matter how much you know him, you must know the difference between the man of God and Probably your pastor friend. Maybe that pastor is your friend. Never ever get too familiar with a man of God. Otherwise you will not be able to receive from him. You must know the difference. My wife knows the difference. When my wife is angry with me, there is, there is a way she addresses me. Praise God. There is a way she calls me. My wife is so... So conscious about the importance of me being honored and respectful, she doesn't even call me by name in public. She'll either call me Rev and you know, whatever. And even and she carries it into the house. But when she's angry with me, that is where you will hear that is when you will hear Vic. <laughs> when I hear Vic, I know I have passed my boundary that day. <laughs> And we know that, like they say in Yoruba Palace, I have climbed the tree beyond the leaves. <laughs> I have left the branches. <laughs> Glory be to God. But the same woman under other circumstances will come and kneel down before me and say, lay your hands on me and bless me. Or pray for me. Because she knows the difference between the two. Praise God. Look at the neighbor and say, I hope you know the difference. Even though Simon Peter was so close to the Lord Jesus Christ, they ate with him, they lived with him, they, 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 they saw him in his humanity, he saw beyond the veil of his humanity. And by revelation that knew that I am just so privileged to be so close to divinity. The divinity is just clothed by our common humanity. He is God. And that revelation now led to a transformation in his own life. A transformation that happens in the life of each and every one of us. We become children of God. Come on, somebody say, I'm a child of God. If God is unstoppable, you are unstoppable because you are now in the image and the likeness of your heavenly father. John put it this way in 1 John 3 verses 1 to 2. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called what? Children of God. Therefore the world does not know us. The world says that they don't know us. They, no oh boy. When they see us, they just see us as 
ordinary human beings like them, they don't know us. They don't know that we are in this world. Yes, we are clothed with their common humanity, but we are divine beings on the inside. So the Bible uses various superlatives to describe us and talks to us in terms of our difference from the world system. So you, that's why you will notice, for instance, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, you will see Paul writing to the Corinthians and, 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 and reprimanding them for, for being carnal and telling them that, look, he said, for you are still carnal, for we are there are envy, strife, and divisions among you. And it is true, we behave like unbelievers at times, and that's why they don't know the difference. They see us fight like them. They see us, they see us quarrel like them. They see us, they see us afraid like them. They see us, they see us uh, 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 doubtful like them. They see us shaking because of the economic circumstances like them. You know, so, so they said, for you are still kind of where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you. Are you not kind of behaving like mere men? In other words, you are behaving like ordinary human beings. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not an ordinary human being. Oh, maybe your neighbor is not getting it very well. Tell your neighbor, you are not an ordinary human being. Tell that neighbor. So that's why I said yesterday that once there's transformation, the next thing that comes is a new sense of identity. <laughs> and one of the greatest blessings of my life is being in a small fellowship of Christians called the Holy Ghost Caucus in Ilani, the Equara State. And the theme of the church, the church has one verse that was our theme, 1 John 4.4. And what does First John 4, 4 says? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Come on, somebody say, I'm born of God. The child of a goat is a goat. The child of a cow is a cow. The child of a pig is a pig. And the child of a dog is a dog. And the child of God is a God on the face of the earth. He's not an ordinary human being. And the greater one lives on the inside of him. So tell me who is going to stop him in his tracks. Tell me who can stop the church from accomplishing the will of God. Who can stop you from fulfilling your destiny? Listen, this thing starts from your attitude on the inside. It does not start with how much money you have in your bank account, how much people you have in your network. It does not start from your net worth. It does not start from how many degrees you have in the bank. It does not start, my brother, from how many, how many capital you have to start your business. Everything starts with your sense of identity. In the beginning, God created. He first knew himself as God with the capacity to create. Before he attempted to create, your sense of identity determines what you attempt in life. Whether you believe you are able or not is a product of your identity. Your sense of identity. Your sense of who you are. It's so crucial. This point is very, very crucial. Because many Christians that see themselves in the light of their ancestry, their natural ancestry, they see themselves in the light of how many degrees they have, how many capital they have to start business. That's something I like very much about my friend Julian Kula. Julian Kula has stories of business failures and, and his bounce backs. Yes, this guy can be down to nothing, but it's one thing to be down to nothing and another thing to see yourself as down. He never sees himself as down. My brother wrote a mini book in the early years of his ministry titled Ideas Rule the World. A fantastic idea can attract money any day, any time. And I've seen it happen. There are people that I know who will come up with business ideas they don't have a dime and the money will come because they have the idea. Just because they have the idea. The other day, a former member of our church in Lagos, you know, she moved to the island before we had a church on the island and changed church. But this lady, I knew her as a staff of, of another church. And it, it, there's this movie that RMD produced recently that's on next, Netflix and B Breaking the Records there, the Black, black. The black Book. Her finance company that she started with a partner that she was the one that invited the partner to join her to start it financed that movie. Yes, it did. 
And I knew her. When she joined that church at the time she was with us, in those days when Lagos Church was at Necker House. But she believed she could and started this business. In all that she started was an investment club because she knows how to manage her money very well. So she, was, she just reached out to some friends and said, bring your money, I can help you manage it. And I promise you this increase at the end of the year. And she began to manage, and she began to manage it, and then, the thing began, and then she registered a company, and then the thing began to balloon and began to balloon and began to balloon. And today the young lady is financing heavy projects nationally and internationally. Everything starts with how you see yourself. Like my daughter was preaching earlier, Caleb said, let us go up at once. Bam. Let's take on the giants. Why? Because she knew God was with them. She just knew God was with them. <laughs> Every time I've been able to conquer my fears and obey the word of the Lord that is upon my life, I'm always excited and grateful that I obeyed. Even, even if it is with trepidation. As a 26-year-old young man, 28 years ago, I remember walking into Banquet Hall of Premier Hotel. The devil was pumping words into my ears. I said, you will fail. You will fail. You're, you are a failure. You want to start Global Harvest Church? <laughs> global Harvest will not rise. It will, this vision can never see the light of day. You, I, all manners of voices talking to me. But there was a stronger voice on the inside. And all that mattered to me was I wanted to be sure God was with me. And it made all the difference. Glory to God. I remember when, you know, when I went to Vancouver to start church, as soon as I went to Vancouver, like the COVID just hit, Bwah! I said, ah, what is this? One day, look, COVID was so bad in Canada, Nigeria, you guys are just moving all around, <laughs> there was no COVID here. Um, <laughs> Nigeria didn't say COVID. You, need, need, you needed to have been in the Western world during the COVID season. You are walking like this. Somebody's coming like that, they will just go like that. Even with mask in the nose. There were no social contact. You visit somebody, Canada will fine you $250 for going to somebody's house during COVID. They visit you, they fine you $1,200. I enter Canada, I had to be inside my small apartment for two straight weeks. In isolation, all alone. Before I travel, my family will tell me, let us go to movies. Movies for where? Have we read all the Bible and the books we have? We will be watching movies. You know, they want me to sit down watch movies with them. It is one of the greatest challenges my family will have with me. I don't do movies. When I was alone inside the house for, for, for 48 hours like this, very quickly I downloaded Netflix because I was going to run mental. And all alone, nobody visiting you, nobody. My birthday, November 7, 2020, 2020, like this. I was, I begged the couple, please, let me take you out for dinner. I will pay myself. Just to have somebody that I can talk to on my birthday anniversary. Puff, they begged me, don't you please. Christians were scared of coronavirus. Even with a uh, job, they still were not ready to go anywhere. We are born again Christians. When we started church like this, we, we got four or five families on Zoom, so we started the church on Zoom. We got four or five families. When this church itself opened like this, it was only one and a half families that came. You say, what do you mean by that? One family came, the second family, only the head of the family showed up. Wife and, and child, uh, they are at home mm, to protect from coronavirus. So only one and a half families showed up in church to start. I paced back and forth in my little flat. I said, Father, you have never sent me an assignment than I feel. I will not fail. You are here with me in this place. This church will be successfully planted in the name. I paced back and forth speaking in other tongues. I said, no, 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 no. The fact that the challenges of COVID are there does not mean we will fail. We will not fail. And that church is there today. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, you will not fail. Hallelujah. Have that sense of identity that you will not fail. On this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the next thing is authority. <laughs> Somebody say authority. A sense of what? 
authority. Becoming one with Christ and becoming part of his church is guarantee of shared authority with him. Shared authority with him. Shared authority with him. We have been made partakers of the divine nature. There is a oneness about our relationship with the Lord Jesus. It's, it's like a wife with her husband. It's shared authority. You are working for a boss in a particular company and you treat his wife like anything and you treat the wife anyhow. You lack wisdom. She may not be your chairman, she may not be your CEO, but by being a husband's wife, she's got influence. And she's got a level of authority there. May something not happen to the man, she may even become the chairman of the company. Or it is her son. Then what will be your story? It is foolishness to honor a man and not honor his wife. She shares not only in the identity by dropping a meaning name and taking on his name, but she shares authority. And it's the same thing with the church. We share authority with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in Mark 16, 17, it says, Jesus said, and this time shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall do what? Cast out devils. They have authority over the devil in the name of Jesus, which they inherited by being born again. In Ephesians 3, 14, it says, for this cause, uh, uh, Ephesians 3, verse, verse 15, Okay, let's start from 14. Let's start from 14. He said, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, from whom the whole family, uh, what's the, what's the uh, I mean, fam, how many families do we have there? How many families do we have there? Only one family, isn't it? But it looks like it's a large family. That's why it says whole, isn't it? In heaven and earth is named. It's like some families here. Some of you are in Nigeria. Some are in the United States. Some members of the family are in the United States. But it's just the same family. Is that not so? So some family members are in heaven. Glory be to God. Led by the Father and Son. Father and Son. The Holy Ghost is here with us down here. They are the head of the family. But we've got loved ones who have gone home to be with the Lord. Is that not so? And some of us are down here. But it's still one family. Somebody say one family. Of whom the whole family... In heaven and earth is what? Named. Named. Named with what name? Named with the name of Jesus Christ. That family has been named with the name of Jesus Christ. By being born into God's family, you inherit that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By being the son of God, Jesus inherited a more excellent name than the angels. By being born again, we have inherited the same name. It's all because of our oneness with Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 tells us about our adoption. When it says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. He said, but you receive what? The spirit of adoption, whereby we cry. Come on, somebody say, I have received. The spirit of adoption. Some translation says the spirit of sonship. Look at the result. Verse 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. Verse 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. That we are what? I didn't ask for the passion translation please. Keep it in New King James Version. Romans 8.16. Keep it in New King James. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? You have that witness on the inside of you, isn't it? Now, what is the implication? Verse 17 is the implication. The implication is, and if children, then heirs. Who is a heir? Somebody who inherits another. Is that not so? Okay, heirs of what? Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Did we suffer with him? I said, did we suffer with him? 
talk to me somebody did we suffer with him because when he came into the world and went to Calvary's cross he went there on our behalf when he suffered we suffered when he died we died when he rose we rose and so we share in, we share in his glory once people see uh, uh, we'll be glorified together they are always looking into the future oh yeah when we die we'll be glorified we'll be called to glory Glory begins now. That's why he says in 2 Corinthians 3, 18, we all with open face beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. It's from one divine dimension to another divine dimension, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, oh you don't believe that? Look at Hebrews chapter 2. I love this stuff. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14. Let's look at it. Hallelujah. Somebody says shared authority. It comes from our shared identity, our oneness with him, our being a part of his family. We are transformed into the same family and from the new identity comes shared authority. In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. In other words, we the children who are partakers of humanity, okay? We were partakers of the nature of Adam. Are you following me, somebody? Is that clearer? Okay. He himself likewise shared in the same by becoming son of Joseph and Mary. By being born of Mary, he also shared in our common humanity. Is that not so? That through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Okay? And then do what? As a result. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Let's read on. Glory to God. For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore in all things, he had to be made like his brethren. Somebody say brethren. Who are his brethren? He was made like us. We are now his brethren. That he may be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. To make propitiation for the sins of the people. So we are his brethren. He, 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 he identified with us in his death, burial, and resurrection so that we can become identified with him as children of God. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's go back to that 1 John 3. I, I, I made reference to it earlier. 1 John chapter 3. Let me show us something there before I continue on this word of authority. We'll break it down further soon. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called what? Children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because he did not know him. They don't know him. They don't know us because we are, we are him and he is us. We are the same now. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Bel verse 2. Where is that verse 2? Beloved now, we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like what? For we shall see him as he is. It's not that we are going to become like him. We are already like him in spirit. Are you getting me somebody? You know, when he appears, we see him exactly as he is. And as we see him as he is, we will discover that that is exactly the way also we are in spirit. The problem is that our humanity covers our divine nature. And we now look at ourselves after the order of our humanity. You are not an ordinary human being. Stop seeing yourself as an ordinary human being. It is this seeing ourselves with the wrong sense of identity that is not allowing us to walk in our authority. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The right sense of identity is the key to functioning in the authority as a believer and as a child of God. There is an attitude sons have in their father's house. Somebody say attitude. One day I entered into our first daughter's, house, our daughter's bedroom. I entered there and I saw a, a box of perfume that I just bought for her mother. And I don't buy her mother cheap things. Even those ones too. You can't buy them cheap things. I don't know who exposed them to good things. Never buy my kids in the toilet and they collect it from you. Now, they know good things and they like them. 
So I saw the box of perfume. That's so why I'm like, ah, did mommy give this to you? Because I know her mom really liked that particular type of perfume. Did your mom give it to, to you? She said, no. She said, she didn't give it to me. She said, it's when you tell her that you want it that she will be arguing with you. Whatever I need, I just take it. That was exactly what she told me. Whatever I need, I just take it. <laughs> I just like that. Power, is that power of first bond in this house or which one now? Then whatever I need, I just take it. And it is true, and at times I will hear, hear them argue quick. Ah, no, 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 Charlotte, you cannot now have this one. Let, let me give you another one. So, mommy, what, what are you Mom, Leave you, you take, take the other one. You, 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 you give me this one. And they, will, they are wrestling the thing from their mother. Ah. Somebody say authority. When you know she is my mother. That's, I will never forget from when I was a child, this Yoruba comic relief was a short drama. In that short drama, one man got angry with his son and said, I am tired of having you in my house. Pack your bags and leave my house. He said, I am in my father's house. You to go to your father's house. <laughs> because in Yoruba culture, a son inherits his father. Whatever belongs to the father belongs to him. So when the father told him to pack out of his house, he told the father to pack out that he was in his father's house. He too should go to his father's house. <laughs> <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Go to your father's house. <laughs> Look at the neighbor and say, I know who I am. And I know what I have. I have authority in my father's house. Whatever I bind is bound. Whatever I lose is loose. Shout the loudest hallelujah. Like Dr. K told us yesterday night, there will be opposition. You're trying to fulfill your destiny, there will be opposition. Some will be internal, some will be external. Some will be human, others will be demonic. It does not matter. The nature, character, form, dimension, outlook, shape, presentation of whatever the opposition is. I have authority. And it is not my personal authority, it's not derived from my humanity. It is the same authority that Jesus has because he is a heir of God and a, I'm a heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Christ has inherited his father's authority and I share it with him. That first John 3. Please put it back there. And let's look at that verse. And let's look at verse 3 now. Go to verse 3. And everyone who has this hope in him does what? Purifies himself just as he is pure. Go to chapter 4. Oh, no, before chapter 4. Go to verse 9. This first John. I enjoy first John. Kai. Kai. John. Because when you read John, you see the Father's love, and you see your sonship, you see your identity. Whoever has been born of God does not commit sin. <laughs> Don't let me go into the theology of that. <laughs> Glory to God. But your spirit man has been recreated in the very image and the likeness of the Almighty God. Well, some translation says, does not practice sin. And it's true, we don't practice sin. It's not our nature. Somebody say, it's not our nature. For his seed, now this word seed, you can trans translate as nature or genetics. It's actually in the Greek from the same root with the word sperm. You know, genes are inside sperm. For his seed, his nature, his genetics remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. The Bible says he cannot. <laughs> when I didn't understand this verse, the next time I sinned like this, I said, oh, that means I'm not born again. I didn't know it's referring to my spirit man. The perfect condition of my spirit man in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes. If Christ cannot sin, I cannot sin in spirit. It's not possible. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. It's the relics of the old man. The real you is not a sinner. All the wrestling you are doing with an addiction, with a particular, with a particular compulsive behavior, it is all programming in your mind. It's programmed. If you can deprogram and reprogram, that's it. It's done. 
and the key to it is revelation because revelation will bring transformation. Revelation of who you are will transform your behavior, to transform your sense of identity and transform your behavior. Okay, so let's go to chapter 4 now and look at verse 17. Chapter 4, verse 17. Chapter 4, verse 17. Thank you. Love has been perfected among us in this. Did you say love is going to be perfected? It has been what? Already. Already. This is something that has happened already. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. My boldness in the day of judgment is not based on whatever I do now or do not do. It is based on the love that has been perfected among us already. And it is perfected in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. How is it perfected? Because as he is... Come on, help me finish that verse. Because as he is... Because as he is... Because as he is, as Jesus is right now, so am I. Look at your neighbor and say, as Jesus is right now, so am I. Tell somebody else, as Jesus is right now, so am I. Do you have the right sense of identity now? Do you realize as he is, so are you? Is he stoppable? Is he stoppable? I said, is he stoppable? The way Jesus is right now, is he stoppable? If he's going to the nations to disciple all nations, is he stoppable? If he's pastoring a church, is he stoppable? If he's running a business, is he stoppable? Come on, if he's not stoppable, then you are not stoppable. With the right sense of identity, you operate in the right sense of authority. Glory be to God. Somebody say, I walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus and I are one. As a woman shares in the authority of her husband. As a child shares in the authority of his or her parents. It's the same thing. Hallelujah. Children share authority over servants in the house. Is that not so? I mean, we teach our children, we taught our children to be respectful when they were at home. You know, but uh, authority is authority. And so, when we have a chef, they will order for food. They can call the person uncle, they can call him Mr. They can call him whatever, respectfully. But they place to their orders. I would like to eat rice and beans. Uh, can you kindly, you were respectful about it, but can you kindly cook it? And he better cook it. Because if they report him as not cooking it, it is the end of his job. Because if they tell mommy, mommy will be like, my own daughter asked you to cook. You did not cook. Or they report to daddy, it even gets worse. Glory to God. My own daughter. Oh, my own son asked you to, what am I paying you for? Glory to God. I said, glory to God. It's shared authority. Because you're a child of God, because you are, you, you are now one with Christ. Now, these people who are one with Christ are called the church. The ecclesia. We will go into that one next time. I think I have some minutes tomorrow, isn't it? Praise God. It's a full session tomorrow morning. Glory to God. So, we read and I'm going to teach this thing. I want to talk about the ecclesia and the authority that the ecclesia have with the king. Oh my goodness. You will know that you know that you know you are unstoppable. The only thing I want to warn you about is that you will also discover that this authority comes with responsibility. In fact, the purpose of the authority is the responsibility. Mm, and we have used the authority very selfishly mm, for many, many years. But we must use the authority with responsibility. But have you been blessed this morning? Let's celebrate uh, Dr. K. He arrived just a few minutes ago. Glory to God. He will be ministering shortly, but I'm sure there is an interregnum in between sessions. But I want you to just say out loud, I am born of God, a child of the living God. I have a revelation of Jesus Christ, and I am transformed into the same image. 
I am a son of God. I have the divine nature and I have the life of God flowing through me. I am not an ordinary human being. I have the capacity to succeed supernaturally in the purposes of God in whatever I do, wherever I do it. I declare whatever I lay my hands upon prospers and prospers abundantly. I am not out of control of the forces of this life. I am in charge. I am in control. I subdue all opposition and I exercise dominion. I declare I am making progress. I am advancing. I am increasing on every side and I cannot be caged. I cannot be stopped. I cannot be stagnated. Regression is not my portion. I don't go back. I move forward from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith, from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you truly believe it, make some noise and rejoice.